Good afternoon. It's Saturday, March 14th. My name is Victor Jernigan, and I'm here to talk about the coronavirus and the impact on real estate investors, home buyers, home sellers, and the economy as we know it. There are over a hundred videos that have been posted in the last 10 days on YouTube dealing with how the coronavirus will impact real estate investing. They talk about the low interest rates. They talk about the lack of inventory that there's going to be. They talk about how multifamily housing will have buying opportunities. They talk about how people uh, will, this would be a good time for investors. Max Maxwell's got a video where he recognizes that he's never been in a crash before and he gives people really good advice at the start of the video on understanding that we need to be taking care of each other in this situation. Other people are talking about how these low interest rates are going to create buying opportunities and they're wanting you to watch other videos that they've got on their channel about how to invest this way or join this mastermind group. And what people need to understand is that this is going to get to be really bad. I don't want to sound like an alarmist, but I've seen difficult situations in the past. And I can say that anybody who is comparing this to 9-11 didn't go through 9-11 with a real estate portfolio. People who are comparing this to other, uh, other flu uh, situations like the SARS epidemic, uh, the pandemic that came through, is completely missing the situation. Those who are comparing it to 9-11, talking about the fact that people are afraid to do things, are completely missing the, and focusing on the wrong things. I don't want to sound elitist about the fact that I'm saying these other people are wrong. They're not saying things that are, that are untruthful. They all have a certain degree of truth to them, but they're not really taking into consideration how the real estate business works. And for there, there to be a functioning real estate business, there needs to be a certain demand coupled with the ability to receive financing, and that eventually will equal a price equilibrium. If there is no demand, it doesn't make any difference how much financing is available. If there is no financing, there can be a lot of demand, but there aren't very many buyers. And the price that people are willing to accept is a function of whether they need to sell or not. And right now, all three parts of that equation are going to be out of balance. They're going to be out of balance for sure for a month, maybe two months. I'm thinking more like three or four. And that gets to be the real problem. Everybody can deal with minor hiccups. Not everything has to run perfect for a real estate investor to be successful and to survive problems. But we're about to get into a situation with social distancing that is going to change the way society works. And the fear factor will linger on far beyond when the virus subsides. Now, I wish it weren't that way, but history has proven that it does work that way and it takes several years for society to forget about the problems that it had and move on with its life. So right now, every investor needs to be prepared for not receiving rental income uh, four weeks from today, eight weeks from today, 12 weeks from today, and possibly 16. If you have an Airbnb property, there are people who are advising you to rent it for less money. You can rent it for whatever you want to, but the fact is, I don't think you're going to have very many takers. Most of the amusement parks have either closed or will close. If they cancel the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Boston and the, the NCAA March Madness Tournament, forget the program, pro games, everything is going to close everybody is going to stay away from everybody else. We've known that social distancing works to control a contagion for more than a thousand years. Unfortunately, 
This is the first time where social media has driven it to such an extreme that the entire world is wanting to be separated from each other. I've got really good friends who say that I'm exaggerating the situation. Some really battle-scarred, experienced real estate investors who are talking about the fact that they're trying to give money away. But I'm dealing with the reality that nobody wants it. It's going to be, it's going to be hard to give cash away because people are worried where the cash has been and who's touched it. It's going to be really a situation that's going to evolve where everybody needs to work together to manage a very unbelievably difficult situation. About 45%, 35 to 40% of all the people who live in the United States are renters today. Of the 62, 65% of homeowners, about, let's just make a simple number and call it 15%, have gotten in in the last 10 years after the recession, and they have some but not a lot of equity in their property. They're not going to, they don't want to move. People who are renting don't want to move. You can keep where you are clean. You know where you, how far you are from the grocery store. You've got and developed some friends where you are. So you're not going to be selling and you're not going to be moving. If you're a buyer, why do you want to buy? I mean, certainly there would be investors who want to buy, and there will be people who must sell, and there will be panic selling that goes on, just like there's panic selling in the stock market. The people who will sell are the ones who cannot negotiate with their lenders. What I have suggested is the hashtag freeze credit scores. And the reason that I'm saying that is that if you can freeze credit scores so that based on the reality that 95% of the people in America are going to maximize their credit in the next few weeks, and many people are going to miss payments, the way the credit scoring system works, if you miss on one credit card payment, you can be defaulted on all of your credit cards, whether you have balances, no balances, paid down balances. It's going to be an extremely difficult situation for the economy to recover three or four months from now if nobody can borrow money or their credit cards have been canceled because of the way the scoring system works. So hashtag freeze credit scores, I hope becomes a trending topic next week on Twitter. The market, the stock market, is always based on what are future earnings. And since nobody knows what future earnings are, you can expect the stock market to crash. Real estate is based on trailing values, the comparable sales value of other similar properties. Well, six months ago, the market everywhere in the United States, just about, was as hot as, as the proverbial saying, as hot as a depot stove. Right now, it's going to be very hard for appraisals to move appraisals you're receiving today to correctly reflect the value of the property if it's a home for sale. Now, if it's an income producing property, there's a lot of opportunity for values to remain the same because people may not pay rent timely, but they want to pay rent. People are not paying, not, not paying because they don't have any money. They're paying because they can't go to work. And that's a completely different situation. No property owner is going to evict a person who has been someone who's been a good tenant, who wants to pay, who wants to go to work, but can't go to work. I'm going to have some other videos that are going to go into detail on the inadequacies, the unfairness of the way the zoning system works in America, but take this one to heart. At what point do we begin to rethink how all the buildings in this country function? People are allowed and sent home to work from their kitchen table if they can work with a laptop or a cell phone. But if you're an auto mechanic and they close the dealership, you can't work on your neighbor's car in your garage because the zoning will not let you. You can't watch your neighbor's children if they're a medical professional, like a nurse, and they have to go to work because you're not zoned for a child care facility. 
at what point do people begin to say the rules and the regulations that we have in this country are not necessary because believe me they've already started waiving a lot of them and before the the two-week mark is hit there's going to be a lot more waived and what happens when the social fabric of the country where people begin to have to understand the government cannot help everyone people have to help other people 